Hi everyone, it's Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. For this Thursday's video, I'm gonna go over three concepts in Fear Free. Fear Free Pets is an organization that has several certification programs, Fear Free Veterinary, Fear Free Equine, Fear Free Parrots, and Fear Free Trainer program. There isn't a specific Fear Free program for wild animals, zoo animals, reptiles. However, all of the concepts can be applied across species. And when these concepts are applied to zoo animals, reptiles, wild animals, even animals in your home, we don't necessarily need to call them fear free. We just call them cooperative care and consent behaviors. And the three that I'm gonna to mention today and the one I'm gonna go over specifically are considerate approach, touch gradient, and gentle restraint. Considerate approach is how you approach the snake to begin with. Touch gradient is what I'm gonna go over in this video specifically. And I'm gonna start by showing you with my demo snake, which isn't a real snake because I'm gonna show you first what not to do and I'm not gonna do those things to a live snake. And then gentle restraint is the last thing. And so I am working on short mini courses about each of these and how they apply to snakes. But today I'm just gonna demonstrate with my fake snake right here, who's gonna help me out to show you what not to do. And then I'm gonna wait for one of the live snakes to wake up in just a little bit because it's evening and it's getting dark and I know some of them are gonna start wanting out. And I'll show you how to do considerate approach and a touch gradient and what that means. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how not to approach your snake. You don't wanna approach your snake really fast and grab them from above. So you don't wanna grab them from above. It's very stressful to them. It triggers an innate fear response and innate defensive response because their brains have looming sensitive cells that trigger a fear reaction or a defensive reaction. And all vertebrates have these. There's lots of studies about it in everything from reptiles to mammals to people, even invertebrates. So you definitely don't wanna loom over them or come at them from above. You also do not wanna to touch your snake initially or approach them at their face. Now, yes, you can get them desensitized to all these things, but we're talking about a considerate approach here. So the key word there being considerate, don't come at their face and it shouldn't be the first thing that you go to touch when you approach your snake. You shouldn't approach them head on and go to touch their face. You shouldn't approach them at their tail you should approach them as they're moving away from you, and I'll show you that, but you don't wanna grab them first or touch them first at the tail because this is a super sensitive area. Now think about how snakes interact with animals in the wild. If they're trying to acquire prey, they're gonna have a confrontation with their live prey item at the face. And if something's trying to eat them and they're trying to defend themselves, that confrontation is gonna be at the face. So it's uncomfortable for them. So this should not be the first place you touch or approach. Also, if the snake is moving away and the tail is touched, they don't see what's coming. It's very startling and surprising. And surprisingness is very stressful. So you don't wanna surprise them. Also, if a snake is trying to flee, okay, the flight response has kicked in and they are trying to get away or move away from something they perceive as a threat or move away from danger, like an animal chasing them, and they're moving away, that animal's gonna have their tail to grab. And that could be very uncomfortable for them, both psychologically and physically. So please don't make the tail the first thing you touch. So what should you do? Well, you should be considerate about how you approach your snake. And I'm gonna show you that right now with one of my actual living, breathing snakes. Considerate approach means that you first make sure the snake is aware of your presence so you don't startle them and take them by surprise. Then you approach and initiate touch at the least sensitive or the least invasive part of the snake's body. Touch gradient means initiating and maintaining hands-on contact with the snake throughout the interaction or throughout the procedure where your hands need to be touching them. It uses a gliding touch as your hands move to different parts of the snake's body from the least to the most invasive that will be required of you to touch that day. Use a constant gliding methodical touch as your hands move to different parts of the snake's body without breaking contact and avoid sporadic touch. Okay, so you should have just seen me pick up my snake 
in the least intrusive manner possible when I have to affect some type of veterinary or other managed care. So considered approach means that I approach the snake in the area of his body that's least likely to cause a stress reaction, that is least likely to be perceived as a threat or dangerous by the snake. The very first thing you wanna do is just make sure the snake knows that you're nearby. They're aware of your presence. You don't wanna surprise them. Then when you initiate touch, you wanna do it for a snake about midway through the body as the snake's moving away from you you wanna come at the side and pick them up underneath. You saw me do that. Why wait until the snake's moving away? Well, because if the snake's moving away from you, they feel like they have some control over what's happening and that they're able to freely leave the area. Also, the head, the part of the body that can hiss at you, strike at you, bite you, is moving away from you. And if their neck and body is all stretched out, it's gonna be a lot more effort for them to recoil back, turn around, and strike you, at least for most of the snakes that we are gonna have as family pets or educational animals. Can be a little bit different with some other species of snakes like elapids. So the snake's moving away from me. He knows that I'm in the area. He's aware of my presence. I picked him up at the area of the body that's gonna feel the least threatening to him, which was the mid part of the body. I initiated touch from the side and underneath and I picked up. Once I do that, now the touch gradient begins. That means once I've initiated touch, in order to affect the veterinary care or the other managed care that is necessary and needed that the snake can't opt out of, I wanna to maintain touch. I don't wanna to touch and let go, touch and let go, touch and let go, because that adds an element of surprisingness and unpredictability to the encounter that we don't want. If I touch the snake and then remove that touch and touch him somewhere else, they don't know where I'm gonna to touch them next and it becomes very stressful. And they're very anxious now thinking, well, where am I gonna to be touched next? So you wanna maintain constant touch. So you wanna start that touch in an area of the body that is gonna make them feel the least threatened in the least sensitive part of the body, which for the snakes, usually about the middle here. And then let's say that I need to affect care towards the head or towards the tail. I'm gonna gradually work up to those areas and I'm gonna allow the snake to move around and I'm gonna maintain touch. It doesn't mean that I'm restraining them. This is different from restraint. This is a touch gradient, meaning the snake is still moving around and I'm not forcibly restraining the snake. I am just maintaining constant touch with the snake. I'm not removing touch and then reinitiating it. So if I needed to work with the head, I'm gonna to continue to touch the snake and allow the snake to touch me until I've worked my way up to where my hand is near the head. And I'm gonna maintain that touch until I am able to now work my way up and touch the head. So if I wanted to examine TC's head, now I'm at his head. If I needed to restrain him now for some type of oral swab or other procedure, I have gradually gotten there and now I'm touching and working with the head. And all that time, I started by touching him in an area of the body that was not gonna feel very intrusive and I worked my way up to that head. Same thing if I need to work my way to the tail. I am going to confidently and firmly and slowly, but without forcible restraint, just allow my hands to maintain touch, allow my body to maintain touch with him until I've worked my way down to his tail and he knows that I'm headed in that direction. It's not a surprise when the tail is touched because I never at any point removed that touch and then reinitiated touch at the tail. So now let's say I had to examine the cloaca or I had to do a caudal blood draw. I have the tail now, where are you going? And there was no stress involved there or minimal stress involved there. And now if I have to initiate gentle restraint, the way that I showed you with the head, I can do that. And what gentle restraint means is that I am restraining the snake, but it's more guiding the body into the position that I need it to be in order to affect the care or do the veterinary procedure. And I'm still allowing the snake some movement, maybe right up into the point where I have to do the procedure and then I'm letting go, right, not letting go, but I'm letting the snake start moving again right away when I'm finished. So let me get my fake snake again and I will show you 
what I mean when I say don't initiate touch and then let go because it adds stress to the situation. All right, so here I am with my inanimate snake. It becomes animate only because I'm moving it. So what you don't want to do is touch the snake and then let go. Touch the snake and let go. You don't want to do this type of thing. That's very stressful for the snake. And if I touch here and then touch the tail or I touch the tail and then I want to touch the head and I'm breaking that touch gradient in between my touches, that's super stressful because I'm touching here and now I let go and all of a sudden now they feel me at the tail and that was surprising to them. They weren't expecting it. So you wanna make sure that this encounter and this interaction with the snake is predictable or as predictable as possible. And when you maintain constant touch, it becomes more predictable for the snake versus if I touch up here and then let go and then touch the tail and then let go and then touch the head, the snake is wondering what the heck is going on. I don't know where that touch is coming from next. And I'm very nervous about it and it's surprising me and startling me every time. So what do you do if the snake is in a coil and they're not moving away from you and you need to pick them up? Let me show you that. If you have to affect a veterinary procedure or some type of managed care with a snake that is balled up and not coming out on their own and not moving away from you, you want to still make sure that they know that you're there, which I've already done because I've taken the lid off of this and he knows I'm here. But I'm going to still come at the middle of his body. I'm going to come behind his head and I'm going to pick him up from underneath and I'm going to keep him facing away from me. And I'm going to maintain that touch gradient just like we talked about before. And I can show you a little bit easier with my fake snake. They're facing away from me. They're in a coil. I'm going to still come at them from the sides, from the middle, underneath. I'm going to support their coils and make them feel as safe as possible under the circumstances of having to do a veterinary procedure or some type of other managed care that is necessary. I hope that helps explain what considered approach and a touch gradient is. We didn't go over gentle restraint too much. I showed it a little bit with TC's head, but we didn't specifically learn anything about how to do gentle restraint. That'll be for a different video. I just wanted to help you understand that when procedures, whether veterinary or other managed care procedures are necessary, in other words, it's something that the snake can't opt out of that has to be done, usually because of a medical need, then we can use considered approach and a touch gradient to help mitigate fear, anxiety, and distress during the interaction. Now, if the snake is so over the stress threshold to begin with that this type of handling and management isn't possible, then we would use different techniques and that's not what this video is about. If their stress level moves out of the green zone, out of the yellow zone, into the red zone, meaning they are in fear for their life, they are over threshold, they are highly distressed, and they're exhibiting red zone behaviors like hissing, striking, biting, freezing, like eliminating, as in uh, evacuating their bladder and bowels, etc. Then you want to stop, put the snake away, move away from them, let everybody settle down, the handlers, the medical personnel, or the keepers, and the snake, and then you figure out another approach that you're gonna use, or if the procedure can wait, you try a different day. If the procedure can't wait, then you start looking at things like restraint, and that might include chemical restraint. Please contact me if you have any questions. I am gonna do a classroom type video with um, PowerPoint slides and a lecture regarding considered approach and a touch gradient to accompany this video. It'll come out sometime after this video. And until then, if you have questions, please contact me at behaviorucationllc at gmail.com through my website at behavioreducation.org or contact me via YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. And I'm also on LinkedIn. Until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals. <music>